Hey guys, good morning and welcome back again to your Unacademy Need English channel. I hope all of you are doing amazing, all of you are doing great. Well, my dear students, this particular video is for all the NEET 2025 as well as 2026 aspirants. You know, majority of the students all the time, they keep on asking me how to master the organic chemistry. Organic chemistry is considered to be the phobic subject for all the NEET as well as JE aspirants. And in this particular session, I will be letting you know exactly how to make this organic chemistry easier, right? In this particular session, you will get to know how to go for your organic chemistry, how to start your organic chemistry, right? All the doubts related to organic chemistry, I am going to uh, clear in this particular session itself, which is going to be very short and precise. Well, my dear students, I believe these are some of the questions which would be in your mind at this particular point of time related to organic chemistry. Point number one, how to approach organic chemistry. Frequently asked question, how to make short notes. One more question, which is asked by majority of the students. What resources to follow? From where should we study the organic chemistry? How to remember and maintain the flow? How to remember the organic reactions? Next, what are the prerequisites which are to be studied in order to make the organic chemistry very, very, very strong? And in this particular session, you are going to get all the answers of all these questions which I have got particularly from the students. So I thought it's better to take a session on this and let people exactly know how to master your organic chemistry when it comes to your NEET or even the JE preparation. Okay. My dear students, first of all, in order to make your organic chemistry strong, there has to be one of the chapter of your inorganic chemistry which should be strong. Right. And over here, I have mentioned some of the topics, not some of the topics. Over here, I've mentioned all the topics which are required to start the organic chemistry from the chapter chemical bonding, which involves your hybridization. It has to be strong, right? Acid-based theories, strong electronegativity, right? Bond polarity, chemical bonding principles, and molecular structures. These are the topics which you need to clear on priority. These are the topics which you need to, uh, I mean, understand in depth uh, before going before jumping into the organic chemistry and these are the topics of your chapter chemical bonding and at the same time people uh, the pdf of this particular session you'll be getting on this telegram group was seen but chemistry official right moving ahead so these were the prerequisites which are needed to start to jump into the organic chemistry my dear students more stronger these topics better is going to be your conceptual approach when it comes to the organic chemistry moving on first of all I'm going to classify your organic chemistry into three parts. One is going to be your basics, one is going to be your reactions, and one is going to be your application, right? Basics include your nomenclature, GOC, and isomerism, right? This comes into the basics of organic chemistry part. Then comes your reactions, right? Which is headache for majority of the students. And reactions involve hydrocarbon, allo compounds, alcohols, phenols, ethers, aldehydes, ketones, carboxylic acids, amines. And when it comes to the application part, application part is pretty much simple. You know it, it's biomolecule and your practical organic chemistry. So your organic chemistry is classified basically into three parts. Basics, your reaction part and your application part. Right? And I believe all of you would be knowing all this already. Moving ahead. Let's first of all have a look on the high weightage chapters of your organic. My dear students, over here I have uh, mentioned the highest weightage chapters in the decreasing order. From GOC, majority of the questions will come from the organic chemistry when it comes to your NEET and even JE, right? Then your second highest is hydrocarbon. The third highest is LDO, LDIs, ketones, carboxylic acids. The fourth highest is alcohols, phenols, ethers. And the fifth highest is your amines. These are your high weighted chapters, which consists of almost like 12 to 14 questions of your chemistry in the NEET section, right? Uh, in your NEET when it comes to the subject chemistry. So we call them as the high weightage chapters of the organic chemistry, right? I mentioned in the decreasing order, GOC, hydrocarbon, aldehydes, ketones, carboxylic acids, alcohols, phenols, ethers, and amines, right? Now, my dear students, when it comes to the basics, as I already told you, your basics include your uh, nomenclature, it includes GOC, it in includes isomerism. Now, what you have to do in the nomenclature? My dear students, in case of your nomenclature, I would highly recommend you guys not to go deep into the nomenclature, right? Nomenclature, just you need to stick to the basics. 
you need to stick to the basics, right? And in order to have the better understanding of the nomenclature, please and please go for the NEAT as well as J means PYQs. There are a lot of things which you can study nomenclature, bicyclo compounds, spiro compounds, which is even not in your NEAT syllabus now, right? Just when it comes to nomenclature, you need to stick yourself to the basics. You are not supposed to go deep in the nomenclature section. When it comes to your general organic chemistry, my dear students, this is the most important part. But at the same time, I would say it is, the, it is confusing at the same time. The key concepts in the general organic chemistry, the key concepts in the GOC, what are those? Those are your inductive effects, mesomeric effect, hyperconjugation, and definitely their application part, which includes aromaticity and acidic basic strength. My dear students, when it comes to your GOC, majority of the times, question comes from these particular topics itself, which includes inductive effect, mesomeric, hyperconjugation, and their application part, which includes your aromaticity and the acidic basic strengths. Perfect majority of the times, four to five questions every year are asked from GOC, and these are the topics from which you get those questions. Now, these are the topics which needs to be prioritized when it comes to GOC and make sure you do not mug up these things, right? Make sure you study them in the conceptual manner. Make sure you make your concepts stronger when it comes to these topics, okay? And their application part. So this is the conceptual part which needs to be understood properly, right? Moving ahead. When it comes to isomerism, my dear students, in isomerism, you have got structural isomerism and you have got stereoisomerism. Well, uh, when it comes to the structural isomerism, I would say your basics is enough for it, right? From structural isomerism, you do not get the tough questions, right? It is simple. It is not difficult, the structural part. You need not to go into the depth, right? You need not to go in, into the depth of the structural isomerism. But when it comes to stereoisomerism, my dear students, over here, some deeper study is needed. Particularly when it comes to the optical isomerism, which is required to other chapters, which is required in the other chapters of your organic chemistry too, right? So your isomerism, which you know you divide it into structural and stereo part. Structural, only basic knowledge is needed uh, to crack any question based on structural isomerism. But stereo isomerism, you need to go into depth a bit, right? Especially when it comes to the optical isomerism, because this optical isomerism, it is used in the other chapters of your organic chemistry as well, right? Moving ahead. My dear students, see, when it comes to the reaction mechanisms, when it comes to the reaction mechanisms, see, there are a lot of reactions which are given in your NCRT, right? A lot of reactions. Does that mean you have to remember the mechanism of all the reactions? No, my dear students. You are not supposed to remember the mechanisms of all the reactions. Let me tell you, you have to remember the mechanisms of only 25 reactions. 25 reactions and the naming reactions which are given in NCRT, their mechanisms are to be remembered, right? Their mechanisms you have to understand. And over here, chapter-wise, I have mentioned, right, which all reactions, right, uh, what are the reactions for which the mechanisms are important. For, exa for example, if I talk about hydrocarbon, in hydrocarbon, halogenation, hydration, Markovnikov ad ad addition, anti-Markovnikov addition, ozonolysis, right? Perfect. These are the reactions basically for which you have to remember the mechanism. Perfect. Similarly, aromatic electrophilic substitution reactions, right? Their mechanism you have to remember. When it comes to your haloalkanes, halorenes, SN1, SN2, SNI, right? Uh, substitution, aromatic nucleophilic substitution, right? E1, E2. Their mechanisms you have to remember. Their mechanisms you have to understand basically. You have to remember their mechanisms. Anything can be asked from that. Similarly, alcohols, phenols, ethers, Williamson synthesis, cleavage of ether, Hydrolysis of ether, Kolb's reaction, reimer taman reaction. These are the reactions which whose mechanism needs to be done, my dear students. Similarly, in case of aldehydes and ketones, these are the reactions. Nucleophilic addition, haloform, aldol condensation, Canizaro, Perkinson. Uh, sorry, Perkins reaction. These are the reactions whose mechanisms uh, you have to understand properly. When it comes to carboxylic acids, over here I have mentioned those reactions which require mechanisms to be studied. Hydrolysis of esters. Hydrolysis of acyl chlorides, anhydrides, nitrides, amides, and similarly, SEAR. In case of amides, these are the few reactions, and I'm pretty much sure you already know them. Gabriel thalamide synthesis, Hoffman bromide degradation, similarly, carbamide reaction, diazotization and coupling reactions. These are almost, almost like 25 reactions which requires mechanisms to be done, to be studied by the students. Because from the mechanisms, anything can be asked.
Similarly, when it comes to the application part, in the application part, my dear students, you have got two chapters. One is your biomolecules and one is your practical organic chemistry. Well, these are easy to do, do chapters, right? Well, these two chapters you can cover in the last month as well. These two chapters you can cover in the last month as well. You cannot, there is no need to prioritize these two chapters right now. Just, I mean, these are easy to do chapters. Your NCRT is enough to crack these two particular chapters and these are easy equal at the same time. Because whenever a question asked comes from these two chapters, they are always directly copied and pasted from your NCRT, which majority of the students do. So I would suggest you guys to do these two chapters at the end. Now, my dear students, the point is, what about the revision? How to do the revision? How to remember all these things? How to remember all these things? My dear students, see, uh, when you will be preparing for organic chemistry, when you'll be making the notes of the organic chemistry, if you think you are going to revise organic chemistry at the end from your class notes, you are doing a mistake. Because class notes, you'll be definitely making some two to three notebooks when it comes to organic chemistry. And it's really difficult to revise those two to three notebooks, right, at the end. Perfect. You get that mental pressure automatically by seeing those big, big, thick, thick uh, notebooks which you would have made in the classes. So what is better over here? When you, if you want to revise organic chemistry, if you want to remember all the things, uh, if the most efficient way of revision is through short notes. This is the must condition, my dear students. You have to make short notes in your organic chemistry. Now, there are three types of short notes which needs to be made in the organic chemistry. One is the short note for the mechanisms. One is the short notes for the reactions. And one is the short notes for the reagents. Now, how do we create a short notes for mechanisms? How do we create short notes for reactions? How do we create short notes for reagents? Let me tell you one by one. First of all, how do we create short notes for mechanisms? My dear students, this is the format. This is the format which, by means of which you will be making the short notes for the, uh, for the mechanisms. For example, this is, this is the table which I mentioned over here. You'll be making these similar tables. Similar tables you'll be making for different types of reactions whose mechanism needs to be uh, remembered. For example, over here in this particular row, I've mentioned aldol condensation, right? I've mentioned the title as aldol condensation. And right after this, you'll be writing its reaction. You'll be writing the reaction which happens in aldol condensation. Okay. Now, in the second row, over here, you have to fill the mechanism. You have to mention the mechanism in the second row, right? In the third row, you have to mention the conditions. For example, when you talk about the aldol condensation, presence of alpha hydrogen with respect to carbonyl group, right? This is the condition for the aldol condensation to happen, right? Reagent. What is the reagent? Dilute or mild base. Perfect notes some important points when it comes to the aldol condensation rate is directly proportional to stability of carbonyl that is your enolate ion right aldehydes are relatively faster than ketones these are the notes these are the conclusions which you need to remember which you need to i mean which you get from the aldol condensation and over here you can note down the steps perfect step number 1 removal of alpha hydrogen perfect removal of alpha hydrogen your uh, your carbonyl formation Step number two, nucleophilic addition. Step number three, uh, protonation of alkoxide. Step number four, water removal. So everything is over here on one table, in one table. And my dear students, if you make these tables for all the naming reactions, if you make these tables for all the reactions which I gave you, whose mechanisms, mechanisms needs to be remembered. My dear students, by looking at these tables, you are going to remember each and everything by just going through them uh, every day almost for 10 to 15 minutes. So this is, these are the kind of short notes which you have to make for the mechanisms, right? For all the reactions which I gave you. Now similarly, um, uh, short notes for the reactions. Short notes for the reactions. My dear students, short notes for the reactions means the flow charts. If more the flow charts you create, more the flow charts you create, better is going to be your memory when it comes to the reactions. For example, I mentioned benzene over here. Benzene shows different, different types of reactions. So benzene, keep it at the middle and take the arrows and write all the reactions of benzene in one page. So that, so that, uh, so that your all reactions of benzene, similarly all reactions of alkanes, alkanes, they come in one, one page itself so that it will be easy to revise at the end. And not only the revision at the end I'm talking about. My dear students, if you create these short notes every day for 10 to 15, 15 minutes, you have to revise all of this through these short notes. See, your notebooks will be very, very thick when you, when you talk about the class notebooks. But when you make these short notes, you will get your entire organic chemistry compiled in just 20 pages. And it, it creates that 
I mean, it avoids that mental pressure basically. Revision through that thick notebook and revision through these 20 pages, right? But you yourself know which one is going to be more effective. Definitely revision through 20 pages is going to be more effective. Similarly, uh, the third type of short notes, that is the reagent short notes. Perfect. What was the first type of short notes? First short notes were your mechanism short notes. Second is your reaction short notes. And third is your reagent short notes. My dear students, you have to mention the reagents on one in one column. Their purpose, what do they do? Like you have got Na2Cr2O7, H2O4. What do they do? Oxidation of phenol. And here, you have to mention its reaction. Similarly, there will be one more row over here. Perfect. Similarly, there will be one more row, one more row, one more row. And this is something which is again much needed when it comes to the organic chemistry revision. And my dear students, trust me if you are following all this. If you are following all this. Trust me, you cannot miss out a single question when it comes to the organic chemistry.